Welcome to our channel where we explore the fascinating world of psychology and human behavior. Today we're diving into seven sly tricks manipulators use, a topic that affects many of us, often without us even realizing it. This subtle art of control can be found in various aspects of life, from personal relationships to the corporate world, where studies suggest that 10 to 20% of managers exhibit psychopathic traits. Yes, you heard that right. It's not confined to the realm of thriller novels, it's a part of our everyday life. Recognizing manipulation is crucial, as it helps protect us from psychological harm and allows us to maintain control over our actions and decisions. So, how can we spot these manipulative tactics? What are the signs we should look out for? Well, that's exactly what we're going to discuss today. By the end of this video, you'll know the seven ways manipulators trick you. So buckle up and prepare to become a master of spotting manipulation. 1. Insulting you through humor. Manipulative people will try to make you feel bad through evil or condescending comments hidden behind the cover of a joking statement. If they see you seem saddened or hurt by their humorous comments, they will commonly accuse you of having no sense of humor. Sound familiar? Type yes in the comments below. 2. Changing the subject to avoid responsibility. When you bring to light a mistake that was made, the manipulator slyly attempts to shift the subject to you in a negative way. For example, they may bring up some error you made three years ago. Trying to throw you under the bus deflects attention from them. Third, reverse psychology where they accuse you of doing something they are involved in. For example, the person who is cheating on his or her spouse but accuses the spouse of flirting with others. The manipulator refuses or is unable to see their behavior objectively. Fourth, classic gaslighting. This is where lies and deceptions are used to manipulate another into doubting his or her knowledge, memories and perceptions of an event. This term gaslighting comes from a 1938 stage play where the main character tries to make his wife believe she is going insane. Fifth, they test your limits. A manipulator will constantly test your limits, trying to see how far you're willing to stretch morally, ethically and otherwise. Be firm, be true to what you know is right and don't give in. Sixth, they will attempt to control you. Manipulators need to control people and situations. For example, overtly and covertly, they will do whatever they can to dictate your actions, thoughts and feelings. Controlling where you go and who you can talk to. Sound familiar? Lastly, they act loving and understanding one day and the complete opposite the next. This subtle sign you'll need to watch for is a situation that leads to an abusive, aggressive or arrogant way. Someday, maybe tomorrow, it will start to get worse. Now let's dive into this topic a little deeper. First up, we have the insult disguised as humor. This tactic is a classic one, often used by those who know just how to manipulate a situation to their advantage. They cleverly mask their insults with a thin veil of humor, making their jabs seem like playful banter. But here's the catch. It's anything but playful. You see, by using humor as a shield, manipulators make it extremely difficult for their targets to express their discomfort without appearing overly sensitive or lacking a sense of humor. It's a cunning ploy, one that leaves the victim feeling cornered, unsure of how to respond. The manipulator, on the other hand, walks away unscathed, their insult delivered under the guise of a harmless joke. But here's a piece of advice. Always trust your gut. If a joke makes you feel uncomfortable or disrespected, it's likely not just a joke. It's important to recognize this tactic for what it is, a manipulator's tool to belittle and control you subtly. So how do you counteract this? Well, the first step is awareness. Recognize the insult disguised as humor for what it truly is, a manipulation tactic. Don't be afraid to express your discomfort. It's okay to not find a disrespectful joke funny. Remember, humor should bring joy, not discomfort or pain. Next, we have deflection through subject change. Now, this is a tactic that manipulators often employ to avoid taking responsibility for their actions. It's a clever ruse used to steer the conversation in a direction that suits them, effectively diverting attention away from their own behavior or mistakes. Imagine you're in a conversation with a friend and you bring up a concern about something they did that upset you. Instead of addressing your concern, they suddenly shift the conversation to a completely unrelated topic. 
You might find yourself discussing the latest football match or the new cafe down the street, while your original concern remains unaddressed. That's deflection in action. This tactic is not just limited to personal relationships. It's widely used in professional settings too. Picture this. You're in a meeting and you ask your boss about the progress of a particular project. Instead of answering your question, they start talking about the upcoming company retreat or the new client they just landed. That's deflection again. It's a subtle art, this deflection. It's not always easy to spot, but once you know what to look out for, you can better navigate these tricky conversational swerves. So how do you counter it? The key is to stay focused. Keep bringing the conversation back to the original topic. Don't allow the manipulator to steer you off course. Remember, it's perfectly okay to say, I appreciate your thoughts on that, but I'd like to return to the issue we were discussing earlier. It's important to hold your ground and stay true to the conversation you want to have. Stay vigilant and don't let the conversation stray from the issue at hand. If you find this informative and can relate, subscribe for free as we continue exploring the topic of manipulation. The third tactic manipulators use is accusing others of their own wrongdoings. This is a classic move in the manipulator's playbook known as projection. It's like a psychological mirror where the manipulator reflects their own faults and wrongdoings onto their unsuspecting victims. But why would they do this? It's simple yet deviously cunning. By accusing others of the very things they themselves are guilty of, manipulators create a smokescreen of confusion and self-doubt. This distraction shields them from having to confront their own shortcomings and prevents others from seeing their true nature. Imagine a thief accusing everyone else of stealing. It sounds absurd, right? That's precisely the kind of mental gymnastics manipulators excel at. They are masters of deflection, shifting the focus from their actions to the supposed wrongdoings of others. But here's the important part. The faults they accuse you of are often a reflection of their own. If they accuse you of lying, chances are they're the ones telling tales. If they paint you as untrustworthy, it's likely them you should be wary of. The purpose of this projection is twofold. Firstly, it allows the manipulator to offload their guilt onto others. Secondly, it serves to make their victims feel defensive and guilty, potentially weakening their resistance to future manipulation. Remember, projection is a defense mechanism, not a reflection of your character. So when you identify this behavior, hold fast to your truth and don't let their accusations shake your self-belief. The fourth manipulative tactic we'll explore is gaslighting. This term originates from a play-turned-movie named Gaslight, where a husband manipulated his wife into believing she was losing her sanity. Today, gaslighting is a psychological term used to describe a form of psychological manipulation that seeks to sow seeds of doubt in a targeted individual or in members of a targeted group. So how does a manipulator gaslight you? It's a gradual process where the manipulator will subtly make you question your own memory, perception or judgment. It could be as simple as denying they said something you clearly heard, or it could be more complex like arranging strange events to disorient you. The manipulator's objective is to make you doubt your own reality and sanity, making you more dependent on them for what is true. The key to combating gaslighting is to trust your own perceptions and instincts. If something doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. Keep a record of events or conversations if you need to. Seek out perspectives from trusted friends or professionals. Remember, you have the right to your own thoughts, feelings and perceptions. Trust your instincts and don't let anyone distort your reality. The fifth way manipulators operate is by testing limits. Like a seasoned chess player, manipulators are constantly making moves, testing the waters to see how far they can push before meeting resistance. Imagine someone with a knack for crossing lines slowly but steadily. They might start by encroaching on your personal space or asking for small favors that gradually increase in size and frequency. It's a calculated game where the manipulator tries to gauge your tolerance and find out just how much they can get away with. This tactic is particularly insidious because it is often so subtle. The manipulator doesn't leap over the boundary in one giant leap. Instead, they inch their way across, pushing a little further each time. It's like the proverbial frog in boiling water. 
unaware of the rising temperature until it's too late. Now you might be wondering, why would someone do this? Well, it's all about control. By pushing your limits, the manipulator gains a better understanding of your thresholds. And with this knowledge, they can better manipulate and control your actions and reactions. So how can you combat this? The key lies in recognizing the signs and standing your ground. Be assertive about your personal boundaries. If someone continuously crosses them, that's a red flag. Don't let the manipulator's charm or persuasive tactics sway you. Remember, it's your right to say no and to set limits on what is acceptable behavior. Stand firm on your boundaries and don't let anyone overstep. Up next, we have inconsistent behavior. It's a sly trick used by manipulators to keep their victims off balance and confused. Let's delve into this intriguing psychological maneuver. In the world of manipulation, inconsistency is not a flaw, but a weapon. A manipulator uses this tactic to create a sense of unpredictability. One day they're kind, the next day they're distant. One moment they're praising you, the next they're criticizing you. This constant flip-flop leaves the victim in a state of perpetual confusion and self-doubt. The victim starts questioning their own perception and judgment. They're left wondering if they're imagining things or misinterpreting the manipulator's actions. This state of uncertainty is exactly what the manipulator wants. It makes the victim more susceptible to control as they're constantly seeking to understand and appease the manipulator. It's important to remember that everyone has off days. However, when someone's behavior fluctuates drastically and frequently, it's a red flag. It's not about occasional mood swings or having a bad day. We're talking about a consistent pattern of inconsistency. So how do you deal with this? Firstly, trust your instincts. If something feels off, it probably is. Secondly, communicate. Express your concerns about the inconsistency you're noticing. If the other party dismisses your feelings or refuses to address the issue, it's a clear sign that something's not right. Consistency is key in any relationship. Don't let inconsistency go unnoticed. The final manipulative tactic we'll discuss is the attempt to control. In the realm of manipulation, control is key. Control is the puppeteer's strings, the chess player's board, the conductor's baton. It's how manipulators orchestrate the narrative, bending reality to suit their own ends. They strive to govern your actions, your thoughts, your feelings and your choices. They might do this subtly by imposing their opinions and preferences on you or overtly by dictating your every move. But how exactly do they achieve this? Well, they might use guilt or fear to influence your behavior, making you feel obliged to comply with their wishes. They might isolate you from your support networks, making you more dependent on them and less likely to resist their influence. They might monitor your activities, invade your privacy, or withhold resources to keep you under their thumb. These control tactics can be incredibly damaging, eroding your self-esteem, autonomy and personal boundaries. But remember, it's not about you, it's about their need for power. Their behavior reflects their own insecurities and deficiencies, not your worth as an individual. So if you find yourself in the clutches of a control freak, remember this. Your life is your own. Your thoughts are your own. Your feelings are your own. Your choices are your own. Don't let them dictate your narrative. Stand firm in your autonomy. Reclaim your power. Break free from their control. You have the right to make your own decisions. Don't let anyone take that away from you. And that wraps up our exploration of the seven ways manipulators trick you. From the insult disguised as humor and deflection through subject change, to accusing others of their own wrongdoings and the sinister art of gaslighting, these are all subtle tactics employed by manipulators. We also delved into how they test limits, display inconsistent behavior, and their attempts to control. It's crucial to recognize these strategies as they can often be subtle and easily overlooked. Understanding these tactics is the first step to protecting yourself. Remember, knowledge is power. The more aware you are, the less likely you are to fall victim to these manipulative techniques. Which of these strategies have you encountered and which will you work on spotting first? Share with us in the comments. Thanks for watching and stay savvy.